the Trump tariffs suck. There is no denying that. All right, even people who are Trump supporters have to admit that these new tariffs that Donald Trump's pushing through for taxes on aluminum and steel is going to suck hard, and it's going to hurt businesses rather than expand them, which is apparently what Donald Trump's doing, okay? Donald Trump wants to expand the industries. He wants to protect all the old... The old American workers getting screwed over by China because they're a currency manipulator and all this stupid bullshit. Well, you know what? It's time I go into this basically to muck it. But I'm not going to be responding to Donald Trump directly. I'm going to be responding to an advocate, advocate Donald Trump supporter. Just advocate everything. At some points, it just feels like he's kissing ass. And today... I'm going to be responding to James Alzip's video, how the Trump tax, uh, the Trump tariffs will help American jobs. Well, if that's what the video is called, it's no, it's, it's just how Trump's tariffs will help America. And it will not. Okay, there are 107 people in the United States House, House Republicans, wrote a freaking letter to Donald Trump saying that they did not want this to go through because it would hurt Americans. Beer companies are freaking going out on social media saying, hey, Trump. What the hell are you doing? Stop. Gary Cohn, Trump's freaking economic advisor, quit because how because these tariffs went through. I mean, adding already to the biggest chaos in the Trump administration since day one, staffing issues. Like, seriously, this isn't even really me ripping on Trump supporters for following him. I do that anyway. But I mean, seriously, I want Trump to succeed too. I'm not a supporter of his, but I want him to succeed. I'm just saying that you need, you guys need to be checking, tr checking Trump on this, all right? Because this is gonna screw him in the long run. For a lot of people, a lot of people are gonna be pretty pissed off by this, and they rightly should be. And so let's go into this. And if they don't stop devaluing, we're gonna have to charge them a tax on the goods coming in. They, by the way, Bill, just in case you don't know it. They tax our goods going into China. It's a totally unfair deal. People have no idea how badly our country has been treated by other countries, uh, by people representing us that didn't have a clue. Or if they did, then they should be ashamed of themselves because they've destroyed the steel industry. They've destroyed the aluminum. No. No. All right, I'm going to post a bunch of articles debunking what Trump is saying right here, that the that China is killing the uh, steel industry because they're devaluing their devaluing their currency and a whole bunch of shit. And you know what? Yeah, China is devaluing their currency, but they're only doing it push through the yuan apparently, which is their currency. All right, so I don't think China is really trying to screw over the American dollar here. They want their own currency being used on the world stage. All right, if they were actually trying to devalue the dollar. And trying to inflate their currency to do that, there is no evidence of that. I have seen no evidence of that. And that's one of the big things conservatives were ripping on Trump for during the election cycle was saying that China was fucking over Americans when it came to things like uh, money. It came to things like uh, trade, which is, like I said, economically false. Mexico for no reason whatsoever. Because, uh, no, no, that's not a tariff thing. That's an American tax thing. You want to know why so many jobs were moving out of the United States for so long and have been moving out of the United States for so long? It's because we have the highest court, we used to have at least, one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world. And one of the good things that Republicans did during last year, and barely scraping this through the House and the Senate and the presidency, was lower that tax rate so that way more American businesses would come back. All right, and another big thing, it got a lot of people raised wages and stuff like that. Okay, but this, but the entire thing about people going to other countries because, you know, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. They're just going to other countries. Why are they going to other countries like that? We need to bring them back here. And this whole protectionism nonsense. It's all protectionism nonsense. He promised it would happen during the campaign, and now it has. In 2016, no Donald Trump ran on the promise to put America first on immigration, national security, and trade, among other oh, yeah. issues. And oh yeah, how's that going? How's that going? He wants to put forth a plan 
that would allow um, 1.5 million illegal immigrants to stay in the country, along with all their kids, well, uh, 1.5 million kids, and even their parents to stay in the country. How's that going? How's it going on uh, conservative policies? It's going decent on conservative policies, but sooner or later, he's going to turn into a full-fledged Democrat like he almost did with guns, which we are very, I am, we are very lucky that he did not go full left. Because he almost did. He was basically saying that shit. That he was going to go full left on guns. We barely scraped that. We barely scraped that away. But guess what? He's about to go full left on taxes. Well, not taxes, on tariffs. Well, not even really full left. Full left. He's just going full protectionism, right? Protectionism does not work in policy, okay? In 2002, George W. Bush put... I, it was Bush or Obama. They put a tariff on tires... A lot of people lost jobs in the auto automobile industry because of that of that tariff. I know Bush had some tariffs in two thousand two. He screwed. He we lost a bunch of jobs because of those tariffs. All right, and like I said, I'm got a I got a bunch of articles. I'm gonna link down in the description below. Roman Bylan does some good reporting. Ben Sapiro and Hank Barron at the Daily Wire do some good reporting on the political situation of this. I mean, it's just like, what in the living world of shit is Trump doing? I don't understand. I mean, I, yeah, it's is it shocking that he's doing this? No, of course it's not shocking. He's like, like James is saying, Trump ran on this during the campaign. Does that mean it's the right thing? No. Like, Jesus. This past week, he made the first high-profile move on trade of his presidency. President Trump announced that the United States would begin charging a new tariff on steel and aluminum imports into the United States. Steel will be tariffed at 25%, and aluminum will be tariffed at 10%. Okay, uh, I remember reading a lot in American history about how tariffs were very unbeneficial in times of, in times of bad economic dealings, like the Great Depression... One of the worst aspects of the Great Depression was that literally, the, I think, one of the first few, for one of the first economic policies coming after the great stock market crash of 1929 was that we started tariffing the hell out of everybody. We were, ter we were tariffing a whole bunch of people, and then that caused a whole bunch of people, caused a whole bunch of countries to tariff us back, and we couldn't really bridge that gap with our own money, so we all got... <clears throat> And so that turned the depression, which would have been just a slight recession, into the Great Depression. That's legitimately what happened. All right, I read a lot, and I read a lot about tariffs during the pre-revolutionary and the revolutionary and post-revolutionary war era. They were not good then either. All right, so this this whole assumption here. That tariffs are good for the country, it, it, like I said, like I just said, it's economically illiterate. These measures are designed to protect the American steel and aluminum industries, nope. while keeping jobs in the U.S. and incentivizing companies with factories overseas. Oh yeah, just so you know, since I don't have the actual like video physically on here, I had to download it on my computer just so I can get an audio clip. The uh, the YouTube tagline has sent hasn't. Has the thing saying Trump triggers robust or stuff like that, which is uh, I'm like okay, uh, I'm not a globalist. Okay, I'm not a globalist. Globalism sucks in a lot of ways, but I mean, I'm not advocate. I'm not advocating for something that would severely fuck up the American economy and do severe damage to our allies and economy as well factories to the U.S. Naturally, yes, this means that companies will be paying slightly more for steel and aluminum because Chinese imports will become more expensive. Economic globalists and cosmopolitan economists took to the airwaves over the weekend to express their disdain for the notion that America would pursue an economic policy that protects American industry, just like every other country in the world. In today's video... We'll Doesn't mean it makes it right. Doesn't mean those countries are economically good. What are you saying, James? Just because other countries can do it means that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be able to. Well, no shit. That doesn't mean it's the good thing to do. Take a look at the history of American tariff policy. There's a lot of 
misinformation out there. We'll look at what tariffs actually do to the economy and how they'll benefit American industry and the nation as a whole. And we'll respond to some of the criticisms levied by our good friends in Conservative Inc. But first, let's talk about internet security. Last year alone, 143 million Americans just like you and I... Oh yeah, it's ads. For 20% off regular pricing using my last name as a promo code. That's 20% off permanently. Your VPN protection on all of your devices comes out to around $1.50 per week. It's a great deal, and they're the company that I trust. Go to virtualshield.com slash also today. All right, so first of all, what is a tariff? A tariff is similar to a tax. It's charged, usually as a percentage, on specific... It's a tax, basically, on other countries because fuck an ec economic policy, basically. That's what it's always been as... Protectionism has always been a thing, and sometimes sometimes it has worked, but most of the time it doesn't. This is a huge leap of logic trying to jump into the whole, hey, let's do tariffs on everything so we can bring back jobs. Like, it'll actually bring back jobs when economics shows that that literally does not happen, ever. Classes of imports into a country. For example, if there were to be a 25% tax on shoes being imported from China, and I imported $1,000 worth of shoes, then I, as the importer, would also have to pay $250 to the U.S. government. Let's say there's an American shoe company, we'll call USA Shoes, and there's a Chinese company called China Shoes. USA Shoes are made in America by American workers that are paid a fair wage and contribute to the American economy. China shoes are made in China by sweatshop workers, and their wages are reinvested into the Chinese economy. Because China shoes uses sweatshop labor and doesn't pay their employees fairly, they can produce shoes for less than USA shoes. As a result, if they flood the market with China shoes, they can undercut USA shoes to the point where USA shoes will go out of business, taking those thousands of American jobs with them. If the American government... What about all the other countries Trump has basically said that these tariffs are going to go into effect for? Like, literally... A lot of EU countries basically just said that they're going to retaliate to Trump's tariffs. Okay, these tariffs are not... Just because the tariffs are going to be mainly pointed at China doesn't mean it's just going to affect China. It's going to affect everybody. It's going to affect everyone in the sphere of economics that are doing legitimate business right now. And it's... Like, I'm telling you, you have... Look, I'm telling you, even... If you support Trump, you have to be scared about what Trump's doing on tariffs. This is going to drive a lot of people out of the country to do business with. All right, like I just said, his, one of his biggest supporters, Gary Cohn, has basically just said he was going to walk out if he was going to do this. And he did. He walked out. Okay, this is a wildly unpopular move. And there's a lot of reasons why a lot of conservatives and a lot of people... But a lot of conservatives and a lot of libertarians particularly do not like this. All right, tariffs are not good. They have almost never been good for the American economy, even to the world economy. It has, an all, it has almost never been good. So it's just, I'm telling you, James, all right, I'm trying to give you some advice here. Don't finally follow Trump on this. This is not good. Say 25% of Chinese shoes, it raises their price to be comparable with those of American shoes. Thus well, no. We do business... Look, I know. We do business with China for a lot of things. And yes, they use inappropriate means of labor. But guess what most of the... Product, I don't know, I'm not justifying their use of labor. Alright, but guess what ma makes up ma the majority of products made th that Americans are using right now? China, they produce most of it. Okay, want to know why China has been such a bustle of economic prosperity since the 1990s? It's because they have become overwhelmingly less communist. But guess what's just happened within the last few weeks with China? Their freaking president has now become a president for life. He's essentially a goddamn dictator. Okay, and Trump just kissed his ass. Saying, oh hey... Saying that, oh, hey, I wish him well and stuff like that. Like, it was a good thing that, you know, China is <clears throat> having a, having their president stay in power longer. All right, he's, it was essentially kissing his ass. All right, this is something Trump has been wanting to do for a while. And it hasn't just been pointed at China. It's been pointed, it's going to point the proverbial gun at every freaking country in the world that does business with America when it comes to steel and aluminum. 
okay? All right, when, and look, when freaking beer companies have more economic policy sense than the president of the United States, something's up financially disincentivizing the purchase of Chinese shoes and creating a situation where more consumers are more likely to buy USA shoes. That same scenario is effectively what's going on right now with Chinese steel, Chinese electronics, and just about every other manufacturer. Uh, Chinese electronics? I don't see people lining up an electronic source for something made in China. I see them going for Japanese electronics. Nintendo, Samsung, Sony. That's Japanese, dude. Are you conflating it, or are you just forgetting? Like, what's going on here? Like, like I, I, don't, I don't see what you're saying, James. But what are you saying? Should good. They're made for cheaper in China than Americans can make them for here in America. And as a result, when they're dumped onto the American market, they sell for less and put American manufacturers out of business. Because corporate taxes. This is the, look. One of the biggest problems with this is that we don't take into account how bad the corporate tax policy for the United States has been for the past, I don't know, 50 years? 50 years of bad economic policy when it came to corporate tax rates. All right, like I just stated, the United States used to have one of the, it still, and it still is, even with the Trump tax plan, that we still have one of the higher corporate tax rates in the world. All right, so it's just higher corporate taxes are one of the reasons why so many people depend on foreign <clears throat> product because it's a lot cheaper. All right, and it's unfortunate that that's how it go that's how it's going, but that's how it's going to go. That's how it's going to continue to go until we find a way to stop the big government intervention into businesses. All right, this because this is what the this is what it's really about. It's about the government intrusion intrusion into business in order to artificially inflate the economy and get their own money out of it. That's really what's happening here. All right, and if you can't see that, you're blind as a bat. Making American jobs with them. Now, that's the overview on why a tariff is implemented and what it is. Man, Let's it's look specifically stupid. at the history now of American tariff policy. Up until the early 20th century, tariffs made up the greatest source of federal revenue. In which fact, is, which was okay. incredible 95% of all federal whoa, revenue... Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, then again... All right, I, I will give this one to James. Tariffs were a big part of federal, were a big part of the government's revenue because, because uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, Jesus, can you get my voice straightened out? I'm tired. Because uh, the United States population didn't have to pay an income tax. That was one of the great things about living in post nineteen twelve America was that ta tariffs were. That was one of the things where tariffs actually did decently in American polit in American life to where you would actually think, hey, it's actually pretty okay. It's because that's how a lot of people, because I mean, taxes weren't were barely a thing back in American back in American society that back then. So I can give them that, but I still find problems with this. Used to come from import tariffs. The Tariff Act of 1789 was one of the newly formed American Congress's first acts, and tariffs comprised the plurality of federal revenue until the introduction of the income tax in 1914. Tariffs have historically been used by the government Thank in you. order to generate revenue and protect American business. It wasn't until the 20th century that we decided to begin taxing our own income instead of taxing the importation of foreign products. Let's take a look now at some of the criticisms of tariffs. On Ben Shapiro's show on Friday, he flew off the handle and yelled about how dumb and stupid and not good Trump and dumb and stupid and stupid he thought Trump was for proposing these new tariffs. This is what everybody in the conservative movement is thinking right now. It's like if you want to hold Trump accountable and actually want him to succeed, you're you're you were doing the same damn thing. Here's one of the tamer cuts from the Friday show. He was totally off the handle. And this is all stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It's economically illiterate. Yeah, I was writing full pieces in March 2016 about why Trump's trade policy was idiotic. He and Bernie Sanders basically have the same trade policy. Note to everyone, if you have the same policy on anything... Y yes, and this is true. Trump has the same economic policy when it comes to tariffs as Bernie fucking Sanders. That's sad. James is basically leaping to the defense of communist, noted communist, Bernie Sanders. And don't go yelling at me, Oh, but actually Sanders is a socialist. He, he basically praised communist countries in the past. He still does today. Is Bernie Sanders? 
You're stupid. Does anyone think that'd be good for the economy? No, because this is stupid. S T double O P I D. Stupid. Price of beer is going to go up too. Yep. Every beer can in America is used is made with aluminum, which means that if you like your beer, you're not going to get to keep your beer. The <laughs> on it is go I actually like that joke because I get it. It was doing the whole uh, if you want if you like your doctor, you get to keep your doctor thing from the Obamacare stuff. Turn it around against Ob- against Trump to say um, <laughs> if you don't like if you like your beer, you can't keep your beer. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Which is, I think most Americans are not going to be super happy with that. Oh no, yeah. my beer. This is the end of civilization as we know it. Bugman uprising when. You know, for a guy who claims to value facts over feelings, Ben Shapiro isn't exactly the paragon of honesty here. What? What, what do you mean paragon of honesty? What? what? Well, number one, this is, he is an opinion host. I mean, that is a criticism, but he is being true about this, okay? I would like you to, the, here's a here's a thing I could get you to do, James. How about you uh, go debate, uh, what's his name? Roman Bylan from the Bylan Report on this. All right, I'd love to see how that would go. He would school your ass in a microsecond. I really would like to see that, because you would get screwed. You would really get screwed, okay? Nothing you have really said of, was of note is really affecting tariff policy as of right now. All, right, all the tariff policies that you were noting were the ones used back in the good old days. All right, you have not noted, you have not said anything about how tariffs have affected American policy since night. Since after 1914, you have not noted how Amer- the American stock market was continuing to go lower because of the tariffs that were implemented after the stock market crash of 1929. You are not talking about the tariffs that were implemented under George W. Bush in 2002 and the ones implemented under Barack Obama in 2013. And talking about how so many freaking jobs were actually lost during that period. Okay, you were not talking about this. You're just talking about things that don't matter today because they happened, oh, some hundred some years ago in the past. The amount of aluminum in your average can, the price of a can of beer would increase approximately half of one cent. In other- nope. Nope. No. Just look, I don't even, I'm not even going to provide a number for him because he's being such a freaking retard about this. Just go look at what Anuauser Bush is talking about it. You'd know. You would know. Words, your 12 pack is going to cost approximately six cents more. I wonder why Shapiro no. leave that fact out. We all know he is about the facts, after all. Another criticism of tariffs comes in a line you'll frequently hear from self-described conservatives. They will decry tariffs as social justice for corporations. <laughs> Losing all your jobs to China. <laughs> Need a safe space, stupid American. <laughs> Tariffs are designed to protect Wait, America. did he just say stupid American? Like he was describing how s- Americans treat Americans when it comes to tariff policy? No, what? No, I don't call him... St- Jesus Christ, what is he saying? I don't... But where are you getting these arguments from? I legitimately never heard someone, A, talk like that when it comes to economic policy. I don't care if you're doing it in a mocking tone. And B, what the fuck are you saying? interests, of course. There's no doubt about that. And of course, tariffs wouldn't be necessary if American goods were cheaper than Chinese goods. So yes, this is government. I just told you why they are that way. It's because of the goddamn corporate tax rates. It is way lower in China. That's why so many people go to China. That's why so many people go to Mexico. That's why so many people go to the Middle East. That's why so many people are doing this type of stuff. It's because they have lower corporate tax rates. They don't have to pay taxes. At least they don't have to pay as much in taxes. As they would if they were doing business in the United States. That's why so many people are getting so much business out of the United States. Alright. Alright. Don't believe me? Don't believe me? Ask Apple. Because apparently, according to Occupy Democrats, they have their own little island storing a whole bunch of money so that way they don't have to pay corporate taxes. 